So here's what we're going to be making today. We're going to be making an arcade cart controller in Unity. Uh, this uses a pretty simple trick. Um, what we're really doing that you can't see is we're driving an invisible sphere. And the cart is just following the sphere around. It's matching this, the sphere's position. Uh, you'll see You'll see exactly what I mean once we get into it, which leads me to my next point of let's get into it. All right, we've got our cart into the scene uh, and we've got a cart parent and a sphere. Sphere is what the cart's gonna be following and what we're actually gonna be moving. Uh, the cart parent, the reason we gotta do that is because we need to make the sphere, see this pivot point, we need to make it match the parent's pivot point. Right now they don't match. Uh, they have to be identical for this controller to work. So we need to line up the pivots of the cart, parent, and the sphere. It can be a little tricky. Uh, but the main thing is to just not have them parented together when you're trying to move them. So you need to get them in place before you parent the cart parent to the sphere. The pivot of the model doesn't matter. Uh, it just seems to be the pivot of the parent and the sphere. And now let's fix the colliders. We can remove the, actually don't do that. I realized later in this video, I need that. So you leave the collider on the sphere. Um, I should not have taken it off here and you'll see why shortly. All right, let's set the rigid body of the sphere. Uh, let's set its collision detection to continuous and let's interpolate it. Let's lock or let's freeze the constraints on all the rotation axes. Let's go back to our cart parent. We already have a collider added. Now let's add a cart controller script. If you haven't already created one, go ahead and do that. Attach it to the cart and open it up. All right, first of all, let's create a serialized field. And this is going to be for the rigid body since we're not actually getting and you we, we could have done a git component on this we could have done a git component in children in the awake method uh, but let's just do it in the inspector so just serialize that field for the rigid body and then just drag it in save it and then now let's go back into our script And let's create a start function. We're gonna say sphere rb transform dot parent equals null. So we we don't want the we don't want the sphere to be a child once the game starts of the cart because then it would follow the cart. And we actually want the cart to follow the sphere. So and we create an update function and we do transform position equals sphere rb dot transform dot position. All right. Now we need a way to actually move the cart. All right. Now we need a way to actually move the cart whenever we give it input. Uh, so let's create a, ver a local variable forward amount equals input dot get axis vertical. do an if statement or if the forward amount is greater than zero then we want to drive forward we haven't created that method yet so let's create it now And instead of doing a local variable, we do need to access this in other methods. So let's create a field for it. And 
Uh, let's not do serialized field. We don't need to serialize this. And let's rename it so it's the proper format since it's a private variable. We're also going to need another variable. So let's create a float for the current speed. So we will say current speed equals forward amount times equals We need to create another variable for the forward speed. We do want to serialize this. This is actually just going to be our speed. Um, you, you, could, you could just name it speed. It's our general speed. And in order to apply the movement, we want to do that in the fixed update method. So let's create our fixed update. say sphere rb dot add force and we'll say transform dot forward times current speed force mode dot acceleration and let's go test it out in unity so now we should be able to just drive forward but first, let's set our speed in the inspector. And before I do that, I need to create a Cinemachine camera in order to follow the cart around the scene. So we're just going to do a quick virtual cam. We're going to drag in the cart parent into both the follow and the lookout look at field. Let's adjust the follow offset on the y-axis. Let's bring it up a little bit. And let's, plus, let's press play and, and test it out now. Whoa. Okay, shouldn't have gone through the ground. Let's... Let's bring the card up a little bit. Maybe it just started a little bit below the ground. And nope. Okay, so what's going on here? Let's check our ground. Yeah, we've got a terrain with a terrain collider. We've got a box collider. It's not set the trigger. So what is actually happening? What's happening is we're following the sphere RB around, right? Well, the sphere has a rigid body, meaning that it's going to be at the will of physics. It's going to fall, but it doesn't have a collider. So it's just going to go through the ground and since our cart is following the sphere around it's just following the sphere into the void and we are losing them so we need to uh, add that sphere collider back but if we do that it's going to be colliding with itself right well that's why we just did this step uh, I went into the layers created a cart layer and applied that to all the cart uh, including the sphere and then I went into the physics matrix and made it so a cart cannot collide with itself. And there we go, it's working now. It's not falling through the ground and we can go forward. So, so far so good. Let's go back into our script. Now we need to be able to drive in reverse. So let's do that now. We'll say if forward amount is less than zero make it an else if we'll say drive reverse all right I'm just going to copy over the drive forward line and we should have to tweak it a little bit but now that I'm looking at it it's the exact same line so this, this is kind of dumb. It's kind of dumb to be having two methods uh, doing the same exact thing. So let's, let's rethink this. All right, look, we can just get rid of this and we're just gonna say if 
forward amount is not equal to zero, then we want to drive forward, but we're gonna rename this to drive. And that should actually be it. We should be able to reverse now. So let's go test that out. We can go forward and we can reverse. Good deal, so far so good. Let's go back into our script. Now we need to add a method to not drive. Um, just this will help with slippiness for keeping the car from like just continuing to drift drift or float forward whatever you want to call it uh, whenever we're not giving it input so we just want to say else basically else if there is no input then drive nowhere And this honestly probably isn't even necessary. This could just be a preference thing. If you like it, if you like for the controls to be tighter, then do this method. If not, if you, if you're okay with it, just kind of floating to a stop, then just ignore this. But this is an arcade controller. I want tighter controls, so I'm going to use this drive nowhere method. So now we need to make it so we can turn the cart. So let's create a method for turn handler. Go ahead and put it in the update method. And we will say, well first let's get a, a new rotation. This is uh, what we want to rotate to. Um, so new rotation, float new rotation equals turn amount. We haven't created that yet. so. We'll do that in a second. We won't turn them out. Times turn speed. Times time dot delta time. Again, we got to create turn speed as well. Let's go ahead and uh, create our turn amount. So we will create one for our turn speed. We'll make that one serialize, uh, serializable and Let's clean this up a little bit. So underneath forward amount, let's add turn amount equals input dot get access horizontal. So we've got the float for new rotation in our turn handler. But we're not done with it just yet. We need to add in one more line. We will say transform dot rotate and in the parentheses we will say zero comma new rotation comma zero and we will say space dot world all right so that should be turning the cart now let's go test it out and I can't turn at the moment but I think I forgot to, yes, I forgot to set it in the inspector. So let's, there we go. Now we can turn. And we're falling. So we at least know gravity's working. So I want to adjust the camera a little bit. In the body in the binding mode, let's change it to lock to target with no with no roll. And that should make it follow it a little bit better. Let's take a look at it. And yeah, it's not much of a difference, but it definitely I feel like it helped a little bit. It follows it a little bit better, it stays more behind it, although it still isn't perfect but it's good enough for now and this video is not about Cinemachine, it's about making a cart controller. So I'm not really gonna tweak with it too much, just trying to get 
the cart controller working and so far we pretty much have it down um, we have the basics for it made we can go forward backwards and turn and it does it pretty smoothly too but I did notice that the rotation is a little bit off on this model so let's select the model not the parent uh, of the cart but the actual model itself and let's rotate it to make it look like it's aligned properly So there is something else we can do to make our cart controller better. Uh, we can't tell it right now because we are on perfectly flat ground. So let's create a slope and we will try to drive up it and I will show you what I'm talking about. So when we go up the slope, it doesn't, it doesn't rotate the car's body to the normal of the slope uh, it just it doesn't rotate the way a car would rotate whenever it goes up the slope it just stays perfectly flat um, relative to the ground and oop, I missed wanted to show you again we're also really slidey it's like we're on ice But yeah, you can see what I'm talking about. There's no rotation at all whenever we go up slopes. So let's fix that. So let's fix that. But first, I want to work on the slidiness. And it's because I forgot to set the drag. I think that's the main reason why so I set it to 2 it was at 0 so I just changed it to 2 and oh it's definitely a lot slower and it's not slidey but I need to and also it falls really slow gravity's working but we need to crank up the gravity some So first let's change the forward speed to 50 and there we go that's pretty good that's much better just changing the, the drag from 0 to 2 has made a huge difference with the slidiness and it just feels much more natural but that is still not what we want right there so instead of scripting it let's just go into the project settings into the fit underneath physics and in gravity set it to negative 50. so let's go back into our script and we want to create a ground normal handler create that method and we will say physics dot raycast and in parentheses transform dot position comma transform dot I was gonna say down but transform dot up it actually needs to be negative transform dot up so we are shooting array downward and we want to say out hit and a distance of one comma and ground this is a layer mask we're gonna uh, we're gonna create a serialized fill for that and we actually need to create a variable for hit uh, so let's put our semicolon at the end of the line and we will create a raycast hit variable now we just need to create the ground layer mask. So let's come up here, serialize field, private layer mask ground. And let's rename it to ground layer mask. We still got to do one more line. 
we will say transform dot rotation equals we want to lerp we want to lerp this will make it smoother we want to quaternion dot lerp and in parentheses transform dot rotation comma quaternion dot from to rotation so we want to put in our from rotation as transform dot up and our to rotation we want to do hit dot normal and we want to multiply that by transform dot rotation and comma 0 0.1 F and let's just look over this line one more time because it's kind of a big one all right so now we should be aligning with the ground let's test it out and we're not and why are we not well we forgot to assign the ground in the inspector remember we have that layer mask variable we created well we need to create a layer uh, for the ground and assign that to the terrain and to that ramp so we need to create the layer just name it ground and we will set it in the inspector and now is working good stuff very good stuff now there is something else that we can change but it really is up to you uh, me personally I like being able to turn like this even if I'm not going especially considering it's meant to be more of an arcade controller but if you want to make it to where uh, you can only turn whenever you're going, then we need to change the script a little bit. So let's go back into our script. Let's create a First of all, before we do that, let's create a private bull, pool. <laughs> private bull is grounded. And, and let's go down and it, we just need to add it in one place. So where it says physics raycast, that second line, uh, we're going to change that. Or we're just going to add is grounded equals in front of it. But first, let's rename this method to be a more appropriate name since now we're going to be doing a ground check so it just is grounded equals and that's it and now it will be able to tell if it's on the ground or not and as for the turning whenever we are not moving all we got to do is add an if statement in front of it and we just say if current speed is greater than 0.1 f or you could probably do zero or whatever value you, you want. You could tweak that a little bit to, to your liking. And let's test it out. Let's go back into Unity. And now we can't turn if we're not moving, which is what we want. Or it may not be what you want. If that's not what you want, then just don't add that if statement in front of the in front of the turning line in the script. Now, in order to make it to where we can only drive if we're grounded, we need to go back into the script and right here, let's just add and is grounded. So we can only drive if we're grounded. So let's test it out. If we go up this ramp and we fall down, we shouldn't be, yep, we should, we were not able to drive in the air, which is what we wanted. Again, that may not be what you want. If it's not, then just don't add that into your if statement that we just did. Um, just don't do the is grounded check. 
And that pretty much does it for the functionality of the cart. Now, let's make it a hundred times better by adding a duck to it. So I got my duck imported into my project. Uh, let's add him to the scene. Right now he's pink, we'll fix that in a minute. It has to do with the universal render pipeline. Let's reset its position, remove the animator component, remove this duck script component I have from an old project. Uh, let's unpack the prefab, let's drag it up into position. Uh, it's too small, so we need to scale it up some. So let's scale him up. Eh, that's a little too big. Go back down. That looks pretty good. All right, he's positioned good. Now we need to fix his material being pink. So you just. Go to edit, render pipeline, upgrade project materials, and that does the trick. And now uh, make it a child of the cart, and there we go. We got a duck driving the cart now, which, I mean, come on. Come on, buddy. You know it's so much better now. Don't act like it's not way better with that duck. All right, sorry. Um, but yeah, that that's it. So that pretty much does it for this video. Uh, there's still a lot more we could add to this, like we could do particle effects um, whenever we're driving or drifting, or we could add drifting, we could add a little hop. Uh, we, I mean, it, we, we could do a lot to it. If there's anything you guys wanna see, please let me know in the comments and I'd be glad to make a video on it. Um, other than that, if you made it to the end, and you found this video useful, then please consider giving me a like and a follow as that really does help me a lot with YouTube's algorithm. Thanks and duck bless.